the ancients talk a lot about this idea of the, the good life, but they never really define it. So what is it? Seneca gives us a clue. He says, one day is equal to every day. I think he's saying that a life is made up of good days. The good news is the Stoics tell us a lot about good days. I tried to build my own life around good days. I tried to build my life around the teachings of the Stoics. So I thought I'd give you a day in the life of a Stoic, a day in the life of, of Ryan Holiday. I get up early, I get up at 6 a.m., maybe 7 a.m. You have to. Marcus Aurelius talks about struggling to get out of bed in the morning. You know, he says, struggling at dawn when you awake. He says, you have to tell yourself, I'm going to do the work of a human being. He didn't say it was easy, but he said you have to do it. I, I remember writing that quote down and putting it on my wall in my college dorm room because I didn't want to get up early, but it, it was an important thing for me to remind myself to do. Under the blankets is no way to fame. That's what Dante says. I'm not trying to get famous, but I do want to be great and the mornings are too important to wait. So I get up early and my, my first rule is, is no phone. I don't use the phone in the morning for a minimum of one hour that I'm awake, no touching the phone. And it's because I don't want to be an item on somebody's to-do list. I don't want my email to decide how my day is going to go. I don't want random social media alerts to determine whether I'm going to be happy or upset or angry or distracted. So what I do instead is I go for a long walk. I put on a weight vest, I grab my two kids, put them in a stroller and we go for a walk. As much as three miles every morning, it's a mile and a half from my house to the end of our road where our mailboxes are and back. We watch the sun come up, we look for animals, we pick up trash if we see it by the side of the road. We play, it's, we sing songs, it's the best. And by the time I'm home, I'm in such an amazing headspace. And that's the perfect place to go into the next part of my day, which is I sit with a journal. One of them, the, the Daily Stoic Journals. And this, this journaling is just for me. The Stoics were about reviewing. The Stoics were about examining, asking yourself questions. My journaling is a conversation with myself. Anne Frank says, you know, paper is more patient than people. I love that. There's really no way to separate Stoicism and journaling. They're the same thing. You know, Marx realizes his meditations is to himself. It's his journal to himself. So the journal helps me clear my mind. It helps me get centered, helps me remember, helps me work on myself. Seneca talks about putting each day up for review. And that's so important. You can't get better if you don't look honestly and with self-awareness at who you've been over the last 24 hours. So I wanna see what I can improve, where I fell short. And these, the, the pages in my journal, they're just for me. I never will show anyone. I don't even often look at them myself, but it's the process of writing them down that, that helps me get better. Then I get to my office, which I love. You know, it's this old building and I just love walking into it. I love thinking about the people who've been here before me. I love thinking of the things they've endured, this pandemic. I mean, the people that came into this building, they worked through the Spanish flu, World War I, World War II, the Cold War, 68, 9-11, all of it. And, and it just, it centers me. You know, I, I find that really like humbling, but also inspiring. And I think about that history as I'm putting my stuff in the fridge and walking up to my desk. For me though, it, as soon as I get here, it's right into the deep work. That's what I wanna start my day with. I wanna do it early before stuff can intervene. I wanna do it while I'm still fresh. Marcus really says we have to concentrate like a Roman. He says, do this thing in front of you as if it is the last thing you are doing in your life. So I do my writing in two, three hours, it, that's it. And that probably doesn't seem like a lot, but the Stoics knew that good work is realized by small steps. It's, it's not a small thing, but good work is created in small steps. Like, 10 books, how was I able to write 10 books? A couple hours a day for 10 years. There's no real secret, that's just, that's just it. Steady day after day work. And so by the time I'm done with my writing for the day, it's usually 10, 11, and then it's time for me to break my intermittent fast. I think intermittent fasting is a great stoic practice. It's about enforcing some discipline on yourself. I used to think about food all the time. Now I have like this small eating window. Like I only eat from basically 10, 
11 to like 5 p.m. So I stop eating a little after five in the evening. I don't eat until 10 or 11. So that it's only in that middle of the day window that I even think about food. I think that's really important. I don't wanna think about or crave food at any other time. And then while I'm eating lunch, that's one of the times that I read during the day. I'm always reading one book at a time. I'm always using physical books. I'm taking notes. Like, how do I manage to read with two kids? It's because I squeeze it in in times like this. It's not really about the raw time you spend reading. It's about what you read and how you read, the Stoics say. Epictetus says, I gotta know what you're reading to know if you're getting better, not that you're reading. So it's important that I spend this time with the books. A mind that isn't given over to relaxation will break, like it's that simple. And after this, it's back to email, phone calls, meetings, whatever like the administrative stuff I have to do in the day. I have to do that stuff, but I'm not gonna build my day around it. I try to have a limited calendar. It's not filled with stuff but I wanna do it after I've done the important stuff for the day. It's in the afternoon that I record stuff like this after I've done my important stuff. What I don't wanna do is try to push my important work till later in the afternoon and then stuff intervenes. In the late afternoon, you know, it's, it's usually in the afternoons I go home. I go home pretty early, like three, four o'clock, and then it's time in the, in the pool with my kids. The, the Stoics don't talk about joy enough, and I think that's a shame. I know they enjoyed doing things. Seneca talks about, you know, kids playing with sandcastles in the beach. There's this story of this Spartan king who's caught by one of his men. He's, he's riding a stick horse around the house with his kids. And the king looks at him and he says, don't tell anyone about this. And don't you dare judge me until you have kids yourself. The time I spend with my kids, the crazy stuff we do, the things I do to make them laugh. This is the stuff that makes life worth living. This is the fun stuff, you know, there's nothing better than that plan, being ridiculous. Like I could probably make more money if I worked longer. I could probably write more books if I stayed at the office longer, but what am I doing this for if not for them? And if I don't have time to do that stuff, I don't see my day or my life as a success. Dinner with the family comes next. I haven't missed a dinner with the family in seven months. It's been a huge gift to the pandemic. We eat and then we go for a second walk as a family. We usually do the second walk around our property. We look at stuff. It's, it's wonderful to see like our property through our kids' eyes. It makes me appreciate things. It makes me feel grateful. You know, again, it's that joy thing. When Seneca's talking about that kid making a sandcastle at the beach, I wanna get to that place. I wanna make sure every single day has some of that. When we get home, you know, then it's farm chores, feeding the cows, checking on the donkeys, get them hay if they need to. It's extra work to live on a farm, like no question it's not easy, but it's good work, you know? I talk about this in stillness, it's like connecting with the land, being outside, doing something, like doing manual labor is really important. It, I, I really get a lot out of it. I know Marcus Aurelius loved nature. He talks about walking through a field and seeing the grain bending low under its weight. He talks about the flecks of foam on the boar's mouth, checking on the olive trees. I go out, in the back field, I hear the cows yelling, I watch the sun come down. I'm like totally at peace. And it's back home, put the kids to bed, we read poetry together, we read books, we have a snack, I put them in the bath. Epictetus talks about, he says, as you tuck your kid into bed at night, you have to tell yourself that they might not make it till morning. That's like maybe the hardest thing to do in the whole world. It goes against like every fiber of my being. But I actually do that exercise. Obviously, I didn't understand it before I had kids, but I do that exercise and it, it slows me down. I go, why am I rushing through this? Why am I saying, no, we can't read one more book? So I can go check fucking email? Who cares, right? So I can go watch Netflix? Nah. I wanna actually soak this in because like, who knows how many bedtimes you get with your kids. After they sleep, that's when I work out, I run, I swim, I bike, whatever. You have to get active. The Stoics call this hard winter's training. You're preparing for the endurance that life's gonna demand of you. And if you're not, if you haven't built that endurance moment, how do you put up with something like this pandemic, something that drags on for months and months and months? The secret for me is I get like all my best ideas running. I usually come back and I'm scribbling a bunch of notes I'm then gonna use when I do my writing in the morning. So it's physically and mentally rewarding for me. Then I'm back, I watch you know, TV with my, with my wife, we talk, we read, clean up the house, spend, that's our, our alone time together. We wind down, really, you gotta wind down. In bed, I read a little. Sometimes I have a copy of my original copy of Marcus Aurelius on my bedside table, I go through it. I read whatever book I'm into. Then it's bed. Important rule, no phone in the room. I do not wanna be interrupted while I'm sleeping. I do not wanna be tempted by the phone. 
And I, when I fall asleep, I just, I go, man, that was a good day. I did everything I could, I lived. And then when I wake up, if I wake up, because who knows, but if I wake up, I get to feel as Seneca feels, which is that lucky. He says, the man who goes to sleep thinking I have lived wakes up the next day to a bonus. And I've already had a good life, right? Now I get to do it for one more day at least. And that's what the life of a Stoic is. It's a good life, it's a gift, and I want you to come try it with me. For the Stoics, wisdom was an ongoing process. It was a journey. Zeno said that well-being is realized by small steps, but it's no small thing. So how do we do that? Well, I suggest the Daily Stoic email. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. One email every single day, totally free. The best wisdom and insights from the Stoics, from Zeno to Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, and Seneca. Sign up, start your journey. Let me know what you think.